think that was a big mindset shift because I we had already bought one business and I bought the other one and I was I kind of asked myself I'm like I don't know why I'm doing all this stuff like I'm just working uh, I'm just chasing money. Hey everyone, Joe Moffy here with Master Life by Design, and we are back with the Millionaire Series. I'm excited for our next guest. His name is Dan Shearmeyer. He has an incredible backstory. He ha- comes from, you know, the corporate world, and now living financial freedom. And we're going to talk numbers. We're going to talk about how he got into what his assets are. We're going to talk about all of it today. But Dan, thank you for being a guest on today's show. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Awesome. Awesome. So I know we got a chance to chat a little bit, but our audience hasn't got a chance to connect and know who you are. So why don't you take a few minutes, share with people your background, kind of how you came to where you are today, and then we'll uh, we'll jump into some details from there. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, so yeah, I grew up in Vermont. Um, <clears throat> my parents were both born and raised in Germany, so I used to spend time going over there. When I graduated high school, I went to RIT in Rochester, New York uh, for manufacturing engineering, just following that four-year school path and then get a job. Uh, Ended up graduating, got a job working for a big aerospace company, and I did that for about five years. Uh, Made good money, but saw that, saw basically where the path ended or that you basically sell your soul and work a ton and you kind of caps out where you could make money. Uh, And I just didn't like the corporate America game. So I was like, I got to, I got to quit, try something different. Uh, I call it, I had a quarter life crisis at 25 and was just full-time skydiving for a little bit, trying to find a small company in an area that I wanted to move. So I was looking between Charlotte, North Carolina and Austin, Texas, ended up in uh, Charlotte area, working for a NASCAR team, did that for six years and still doing manufacturing engineering, which was super fun. It's like working for a professional sports team. Um, and then, yeah, I, I wasn't really into real estate before I moved down here, but I'd always, always been chasing like the personal finance stuff. So automatically saving money for my my corporate job so you don't even see the savings account it just builds up uh and then when i moved down here i was always i always know that housing is one of people's biggest expenses so i've always tried to keep that low so living with roommates stuff like that uh and when i moved to charlotte in 2016 one of my friends was a realtor and he's like let's why don't we go look at houses if you have a little bit of money saved we can probably get you into a house and your mortgage will be cheaper than uh paying rent somewhere i was like all right let's do that so we Ended up finding, I got a just a little townhouse, fell into house hacking, had a friend that worked right by where I lived. He lived with me. So my rent, my mortgage payment from 700 got cut down to only having to pay 400 bucks a month. And then I fell on the bigger pockets, just started consuming all that content, ended up buying a duplex a year later, moved in, house hacked, put down 5%. So it was cheap to get into. Uh, and then bought another primary um, two years later. And then along that time, just from having started to talk about real estate, kind of that's my focus where I want to invest. Uh, My brother found a car wash that was for sale. And he's like, we should look into that and see if we can, if we could buy it. And we just started digging into it, realized it wasn't a full-time job. So it was something we could handle on the side because we both still had full-time jobs. Uh, So we fell into the car wash, which has been great. And we can dig into that. And then seven months later, we were able to buy a storage facility as well. So it kind of kind of escalated pretty quick when I started. It was just let me buy a house every year or two, move into it, get the good mortgage on it, and then grow a portfolio. And the plan then was five, 10 years down the road, I'll see what I have and then maybe go into a bigger asset class. But definitely fell into commercial a little quicker than I planned, which has been amazing. Nice. I'm always saying, you know, you could start off going big too. You don't have to start off small necessarily. So, yeah. but. What a wild journey. So let's back up a little bit. Um, You know, you left the corporate world. Was that a goal for you? Was that something that you were like aiming at? Or is it just something that kind of fell in your lap or? So leaving the first corporate job, it was just, I wasn't really happy lifestyle. I was working a lot. Um, And I was, I'd, I'd traveled a fair amount. So I'd been to other places and it just seemed like I could find a better job with a better quality of life. So that's what that's what ended up bringing me down to North Carolina. And then uh, once I started getting into the real estate stuff, when I was at Joe Gibbs Racing, I decided like, all right, in like five years, like I don't want to have to get another job. I want to build something so that I can be financially free and then work on things that I want to work on. So 
you're financially free now. How long did you spend there at that job, the NASCAR job? Uh, six years. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And then you started house hacking when you got there. Tell people what is house hacking? Because a lot of people may not understand that right away. So what is that? So basically you, uh, you buy a house as a primary, which gives you better lending terms. Um, so you can sometimes get in three, 5% down. You have a mortgage, but then you, you maybe buy a little bit bigger to have a couple extra bedrooms and you have roommates pay you rent. So instead of you paying for the entire mortgage, you're, it, Five years ago, it was easy enough that you could actually get them to pay your whole mortgage. Now, with interest rates a little bit higher, it's a little bit harder, but it's still a great way to live cheap. And then you're still paying down your mortgage every month. Uh, so it's a great way to build. It's definitely the, like, the, the best way to get started. That's so smart. And so I remember when I lived in San Diego at Roommates, I was paying like 300 bucks a month, but I didn't own the place. I wish I would have owned it. That would have been great. So, yeah. but house hacking, it's great if you're single, right? And if you're starting out, uh, some people that are watching this, you might have a family. Uh, that's not ideal. <laughs> My wife would not allow roommates right now or ever again. Um, but if you're single, if you're just starting, if you're working on your path to financial freedom, house hacking is a really great way to do that. So you did that a few times, right? Yeah, I did. And I, then, I, I bought my first house in 2017 and where I live now, which I house hacked at one when I first moved in, but I don't anymore. So I bought this one in 2020. And then we started the commercial stuff in 2020 as well. Okay, got it. So you bought you bought the duplex after that after you got, bought your second primary? Yeah, so I bought uh, the first townhouse, then a duplex. I lived in the duplex for two years and I paid like I think my portion of the mortgage and bills was a hundred bucks a month. So I paid a hundred bucks a month to live for two years. So I was able to wow. just, and then that time I just automatically set up my, my paycheck to basically I was saving 50% of my paycheck. Now, when you were paying a hundred on the duplex, someone was on one side paying a big chunk of the mortgage. Yeah. And then did you have roommates on your side? Yeah, I had one roommate. So that, that's what kept it so cheap. cheap. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you a hundred dollars a month for you know two years. Some people pay that just in one month of rent. So yeah. that's amazing. That's yeah, absolutely that amazing. And so that started to stack your cash. And then is that when you guys you guys then transitioned into the car wa car wash first? Correct, you and your brother. So I closed on the primary that I live in now. Um, I kind of got sick of living next to my tenants and I'd done it for two years. So I was like, so I ended up finding another place a little bit bigger. Uh, and it was in 2020 before everything had gone crazy. So I still got a pretty cheap price. So mortgage is still low. My other two rental properties pay for my mortgage, which is great. Uh, and then we, I closed on this in May of 2020 and we went under contract on the car wash in June of 2020. So everything um, was- before before we jump into the car wash, I want everyone to listen, like two assets are paying for your third asset, your mortgage. Do you have any roommates right now? I don't. Nice. So, you know, you're and you're how young? 34. 34, single, has his own place, has two assets that are paying for. How many people right now watching would love their mortgage to be paid for and you don't have to do anything? Yeah. Like I always tell people, if you have a roof over your head and your utilities are taken care of, outside of like food, you you don't have to do anything. Now, that's not living in abundance, right? Like that's yeah. your bare minimum. I think that's kind of scarcity. But I mean, like that is a huge stepping stone. I remember being taught when I grew up, you know, hey, get a house, you know, pay it off in 30 years and enjoy no payments. And I was like, that sounds horrible. Why am I waiting 30 years to enjoy my life? Like that's miserable. Right. Yeah. And so here you are 34 and 34, right? Yep. This is 30. like 34. You're already living free compared to what people work for 30 years to do. So Awesome stuff to you. Now, tell me about this car wash. Your brother found it. Was it was it for sale sign around it, hanging yeah, so, out front? What happened? So literally, it's right in the area where we live. It's only like 15 minutes from my house. Uh, and there was a for sale sign right next to the, the main sign to the car wash. And my brother's a professional dirt bike mechanic. So he knows some riders that have done really well. And one of them had invested in car washes in Florida. So I think that's kind of what sparked his brain. 
And then he knew I had the the background business knowledge. So I literally just called the sign one day and called the broker. I had no idea how commercial stuff worked. I'd only done the residential stuff. And I just said, hey, uh, me and my brother are interested in taking a look at this. Uh, we both have full-time jobs. We both have good credit. This is how we would fund the deal. And he's like, I have, I have a lender that I'll put you in touch with. He put us in touch with an SBA lender that's done car washes because it's a little bit of a special special asset. So not all banks will lend on it. Talk to the lender and told ask them the same stuff. And they're like, yeah, we should be able to make that happen. So then the broker put us in touch with the owners. Uh, we got the P&L and everything, started looking through it, had some questions, saw room for opportunity. And then we had a call with them and they were actually nice enough to meet us there and like show us the operations because we wanted to know that we weren't buying a full-time job. So we wanted to know it's something that we could buy, improve, but it's not going to take up all of our time. So they did that, and then we made an offer, and they accepted it. Um, I think it was listed for nine seventy five, and we put an offer at eight twenty five, and they accepted it. And I think part of the part of that was because it was during COVID, so uh, the business was still doing well. They gave us updated financials every month, but I think they were just ready to get out, and they were they were still making money on what what they had bought it at. So they were just ready to do something different with the money. So nice. that's awesome. And I want to back up because here there's some you just glossed over because you just you're rocking here. But most people, what happens when I coach people is they find I find that they have a fear of picking up the phone and making that first call. Right. Yeah. Like they're afraid that they're going to say something wrong. The other person doesn't want to hear from them. They're not going to be able to move forward. And they're just kind of faking the funk. And it's like, you just picked up the phone and you're like, let's go. Yeah. Right? And it was, it was, it was, it, it was just that I didn't know if I could even do it. So it was, let, let me ask the question. The worst they're going to say is no. See, I love that mindset. Like you didn't care whether you had the knowledge or not you're just like let's start the journey and we'll see where it takes us and like you said the worst thing could be is no and you just move on but here you are you walk down the path one door opened right like the the uh, broker sent you to a lender you guys had a conversation they said you could probably do that based on everything and then boom you were able to make uh, an offer yeah it was uh it was a lot of learning that went into the process, just the way we were funding it. Um, and it was during COVID as well. So everything was a little bit slower, but it, it was a busy time, but it was worth the effort. Now, you said that you saw opportunity when you guys were going to buy it. What was that opportunity that you saw specifically? Because there's people, they might go watch a YouTube video about car washes because that is a hot market right now. It, it does, they do do well, that asset class, if ran properly. Yeah. Um, so they might go watch a YouTube, talk to someone that might own something. But what is it that you saw that maybe someone that's looking into this path would say, oh, I never thought of it like that? So uh, we we bought us. It's a self service car wash, so it has five self service bays where you come in and wash the car yourself. It also has an in bay automatic, which is you pull in and the machine moves around your car, and six vacuums. So a couple of the things we saw is like the vacuums didn't have credit cards, so the whole site wasn't cashless. Uh, the the main sign on the main road hadn't been updated since it was it was built in two thousand seven. So if you drive down the same road every day. I think there was a lot of people that didn't even know there was a car wash there just because of the way it faces. So we immediately put up a new sign. Uh, their Google My Business didn't have really a whole lot of stuff on it. So we just increased that. So those are the things we were looking at. Uh, and then there was a lot of operational stuff where like my brother's a mechanic and I had to have an engineering background. So we figured we could fix a lot of stuff on our on our own. Uh, so those, and then the other thing was they had, they didn't do a lot of marketing. So there was like no advertising or marketing, which we just felt like we had a better, better grip on. So we could do, do well there. What's maybe one of the strategies you guys implemented to bring more, um, more people to your car wash? What was one? So the, the Google, my business was huge. When we took it over, it was getting like four or 5,000 views a month. Uh, and then it, within a year, it was getting 30,000 views a month. So that's people searching car wash near me, touchless car wash, uh, self-service car wash, those types of things. So just making sure they show up and then also doing it on Yelp, which Yelp gets way less traffic. But if you get an iPhone, the standard uh, Apple Maps uses Yelp. So we wanted to do that. Just posting pictures as we updated stuff on social media. 
Um, and then the other big thing was we just made sure everything functioned like it was supposed to. So when we when we bought it, we obviously washed our cars a lot, but we were testing to make sure stuff worked. So all we did was call the manufacturers. All their phone numbers are easily accessible. And then they just walked us through how to fix it. We would fix it and everything worked. So the customers that would come, everything worked real, it worked good. Or if it didn't, they let us know and we fixed it. So the next time they come back, now they're kind of a customer for life because they know this stuff works. Yeah. They know that your their voice is being heard when you say something, right? Yeah. And so I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the gym and then treadmill's broken and then a, or an elliptical and I go tell the guys and then like I come back two days later and the same thing's still broken. And I'm yeah. like, what's going on? Do you guys not hear what I told you? Right. Yeah. You have an in-house maintenance. But anyway, that's awesome. So when you guys took it over, how much cash flow were you guys making after debt service? Um so when we bought it, the way we purchased it was uh, we inherited a house that was paid off. So we did a cash out refinance. Um, so basically for part of our down payment. And when we ran the numbers as the business was doing the way the previous uh, operators were operating it, I wanted to know that the business could cover the debt service of the mortgage for the car wash, as well as the debt service for the place we took a cash out refinance on worst case scenario. Um, so the first few months, uh, we were doing a lot of projects. So sales were about the same. Um, so it was probably only cash flow in about a thousand dollars, but one big advantage that probably helped us take off as fast as we did is during, uh, during the COVID era, we did an SBA loan and SBA loans were doing six months of principal and interest payments covered. So we didn't have to pay them. I don't have to pay them back. So I didn't have to pay a mortgage for six months, which was huge. That was about $30,000. So, and then also doing an SBA loan, first commercial business, the bank made us have like forty or $50,000 in reserves. So now we just had a bunch of cash, uh, which that, that goes into storage. It helped us fund that deal, but it allowed us to do all the maintenance stuff right off the bat because we were essentially cash flowing $5,000 a month because we didn't have to make that mortgage payment. Wow. So fast forward 2023, things are optimized. What is the cash flow of the business to date? Year to date, it's it's about sixty five hundred dollars a month. Wow. Sixty guys, sixty five hundred dollars in cash flow. That means after all debts paid, that means all that's expenses. extra money left over. All expenses, everything. They're making sixty five hundred dollars now. I know we chatted a little bit offline. Um, you don't take all 6,500 of that cash flow. How much do you take of that on a monthly basis for you? Uh, I, right now, it's only about $1,000 a month because I don't really need, I know what my monthly expenses are. So I'm really only taking what I need to live in my current lifestyle. Um, and it's it's been a mindset shift from not having the W-2, but my my business is kind of my savings account. So- we're saving for a couple projects we want to do. And then once we get to, once we get those done, then we're going to start taking a bigger distribution, but it's also kind of watching what it did the last year. It was, it was averaging about $5,000 a month in cash flow last year. It's doing a lot better this year with some other changes we've done. So it's been steady for a year and a half. So now I, I feel more comfortable upping that. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Congrats to you. But $6,500, everyone, like that is substantial. That pays for a, 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 most people's mortgages, utilities, car payments, gas, uh, food, right? $6,500 can go a long way. And so you got to feel comfortable um, knowing that even though you're only pulling a thousand a month from it, you got to feel comfortable knowing that if push came to shove, you could take more, but you're choosing not to because you're looking at other projects. So hats off to you way to live at a way to live below your means, right? Yeah. You could probably go out and go to Vegas every weekend or buy the nicest car that you want, but here you are living below your means and building more assets. So with that being said, let's jump into you said it just a minute ago, you took some of the money and you actually went and bought a storage unit um, business. Tell us more about that. So, so that all came about the same broker that was selling the car wash. Two weeks after we closed on the car wash, he sent me a storage deal. And at that time, I was like, 
So I was still learning about commercial. I was like, there's no way I just got the biggest loan of my life. There's no way I can go buy another asset. Um, and just kind of pushed it off. So we closed in September, 2020. I didn't reach back out to them until November and storage had not blown up like it is, is right now. So, uh, yeah, but I was just still on my, I was still consuming bigger pockets content. I was still just listening to real estate stuff, learning anything. And AJ Osborne was on the bigger pockets podcast talking about storage. And I was like, huh, that sounds way easier than the car wash. Not that the car wash was super difficult, but it just needs a little bit more attention. So I emailed the brokers, same thing. Um, asked them for the financials. So looking at the deal and just saw how much opportunity there was. It was mom and pop run, pen and paper. So like there was a, a bunch of room to improve rents. And after hearing AJ, I literally just consumed all his content. He had just released his book. Uh, he had his own podcast. So I was just consuming as much as I could on storage. And one of the people he had on his podcast was a lender from Live Oak Bank. And they just talked about how to finance self-storage. And they're like, oh yeah, SBA loans. You can do up to $5 million in SBA loans in different businesses. So I was like, huh. So we had some extra money in the car wash, still had savings because I was still living below my means. And uh, I just called the lender one day. I was like, hey, I uh, had a deal come across my desk. Uh, looks like a lot of opportunity. I was like, do you think we could even qualify for another loan? And he's the one that kind of was like, yeah, you get $5 million in SBA loans. So we're like, all right, well, then we're going to start digging into this more. And that started the started the ball rolling there. So that's awesome. So for everyone that's listening, if you don't know what the SBA is, a small business administration, they give loans. You, they're a lot um, more strict, I'd say, on their lending requirements, kind of like the VA loan as a veteran. We're blessed with not having to put money down, um, but the home's got to be in a certain condition, right? A lot better than uh, most lenders. And so um, so the SBA can lend up to $5 million. Now, let me, I know this answer, but for the audience, is it based on your credit? Is it based on the business financials? How do they kind of determine whether they give a yay or nay? So, so um, it, it definitely depends on what the business is doing, but I think this is with it, any commercial loan is the people that are, the partners that are buying the business have to have a net worth of what the loan amount is going to be. So um, either the deal has to have a bunch of equity when you walk into it uh, or um, or what you you might have to get a partner to help sign on the sign on the loan. Yeah, that's a big one for a lot of people who don't when they I always say you can go big early. Right. We talked about that early earlier. But if you are deciding to go big, one thing you have to think about is. And I know this from you know doing apartment deals and, and learning all through that is you do have to have your net worth um, equal or greater than the asset that you're purchasing, right? And so the banks want to know that. And if you don't know that, you might sit there and run numbers and they might be great. But if you think you got to bring a partner in and that has that net worth and you got to give them a, pie, a slice of a pie, that might take your numbers down and might cut your cash flow that you're looking at. And so um, make sure you know the requirements if your guys are going to go bigger earlier and factor that into how you're partnering and how you're going to purchase this and that asset and go from there. But yeah. um, so go ahead. I was going to go off of that. Like if you're going to look to go bigger sooner, you definitely want to make sure you're tracking your own personal finances. Cause the first thing a, a commercial lender is going to ask for is your personal financial statement, which is basically your net worth. So if you're not keeping track of that, uh, then that that's step one. Start there so you know where you're at. Yeah, and it and Dan and I we're in the mastermind called Go Abundance. We have this thing called a one sheet that kind of helps organize a lot of that and and know your net worth. And so um, depends on where you, each person is, but it's very helpful to understand that. But you also, like you said, yes, I agree. You definitely want to know where your net worth is, how much recourse debt you have, how much you have coming in. I always like to look at, you know, my DTI, debt to income ratio. And so, you know, it really plays a big role because if you think about it, if you guys are watching, like it had never taken out a loan other than your personal mortgage, you know, we're sitting here on this side as an investor, we're like, look, I can, the business is doing this. I have this, it should be good. But the bank is always looking at their risk. 
they're like, hey, what's the probability that they could default? What's the probability that the business could you know, not do as well? What happens if the economy changes? What happens if something happens to that individual? There's a lot of factors that go into it. And so we're just seeing it sometimes from this one area, but we also got to say like, what is the bank looking at? How can I be prepared ahead of time if I'm looking to invest in bigger assets that will help me accelerate financial freedom? So really good point there, Dan. So when you took it over, how much was it cash flowing? And then FD made some changes. Where are you guys at now? Uh, so the storage, when we bought it, the the income was like $7,200 a month and our mortgage payment was 64. So it was basically breaking even, but we saw like market rates went up. Basically we're well over double that now. So it's, I think last month I did like 16,000 plus in income expenses went up a little bit because we did the management software, uh, but they're still not that drastic. I think they're still like $2,000 a month. So that business as well as cash flowing right around $6,000 a month. That's awesome. I, look, I tell people all the time, financial freedom isn't about how much money you have. Financial freedom is about how much time you also have, right? Yeah. And so how many, how much time are you guys putting into the storage business with the software, the systems you've implemented? How much time do you guys put into that? So oh, it's self-manage it. It's a little bit more, it's busier in the beginning of the month because that's when payments are due. But in the middle of the month, there's really nothing to do. Follow up with a few people. So in total, I probably put 10 to 15 hours in max a month. Uh, some of that too is other projects that we're working on. Um, but we used to go have to go up there all the time and now everything's automated. So we really only have to go up like two or three times a month. So most of it's just managing it from my phone, answering calls. Um, so it's, yeah, it's definitely way less than the, than the car wash. The car wash is, we go buy it once or twice a day. Um, and then just there's more things that can break. So the car wash is probably more like 20, 25 hours a month, but still significantly less than a 40 hour work, work week job. Yeah, you're putting in less than 40 hours a week to run two businesses. And the storage is roughly around, what did you say, just like under 10K a month in passive income? Yeah, yeah it's, it does right around six after everything's paid great yeah. so 6500 from the car wash six grand from self storage how much do you pull on a monthly basis from the two businesses for your lifestyle right right now i'm only doing 2000 and then like my rental properties cash flow as well so i'm living pretty pretty cheap right now but um i don't really need to take more and i have the ability to if i want to in the future but that's just kind of like the the lifestyle I've had. I've, I always keep track of my finances using Mint so I know what I spend. And to me, the time, I definitely took a pay cut when I left my W-2, but I have so much time back. Uh, it's, in, it's almost been a year now and I have no fear that I need to get a job. So it, yeah, having the time is 100% worth pay cut. That's amazing, right? Like you don't have Sunday, you know, a lot of people I've worked with in the past and you just hear in the past uh, even family i know they have that sunday morning anxiety sunday evening anxiety in fact studies show that most heart attacks happen sunday evening as they're oh, thinking wow. and preparing for the next work week or you know, next monday right and so it's like ah oh, but you get to wake up when you want you get to go where you want you get to do what you want you don't have anyone if you want to call off of work that day. You just go in the mirror and say, Hey, can, Hey boss, you're all awfully good looking. Can I have the day off? And he's like, yeah, yeah sure. Right. Yeah. So financial freedom for everyone listening, financial freedom. I, I tell people all this to the, all, all the time. You don't have to be worth hundreds of millions of dollars to be financially free. You don't have to be worth a million dollars. If you're literally, your expenses are $2,000 and you have over $2,000 a month in passive income, you have financial freedom. I call that level one. Level two is your lifestyle financial freedom, which shouldn't be exuberant and you shouldn't be keeping up with the Joneses, right? Like you're not you're not going out there buying a $100,000 truck, a $100,000 Tesla, right? No. You're living below your means and you get you have the freedom to do what you want. But what I love about what you're doing, Dan, is you're taking all that excess cash and you're working on 
and saving it or I don't like the word save, not saving it, but you're preparing to invest it into another project or future projects. So tell me, do you have anything in the pipeline right now that you're looking at? Yeah, I have a, another car wash that's actually close to our storage facility uh, and a lot of the same improvements that we've done, we could do there. It's an older owner, so uh, I've met him, looked at it a few times. So I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm going to give him an offer here by the end of the week and see see if we can work something out. Very nice. And Dan brought up a good point. It's like there's a lot of mom and pop people who are at the age where they're starting to look to retire. They want to cash out. They want to kind of rest their feet and not have to work so much. And so they're looking to exit. And a lot of businesses, and I know we're here talking about real estate too, but a lot of businesses right now, we're going to see a large wave of transition. And this is where, you know, I look at someone like Cody Sanchez, who's kind of like leading the charge of buying businesses and, and you know, uh, optimizing them and being able to sell them if they want, flip them or keep that cash flow. So there's a lot of opportunity coming. If you haven't thought about buying a business, and I see this a lot. And I don't know about you, Dan, and your friends, but I see a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to start a business. And that's great. Just know you have to wear like 10 hats. Yeah. And it's a lot of energy to get things rolling off the ground. However, yeah. there's a great book called Buy Them Build, right? Where someone's already did all that hard work and you, you go in to buy it. And so, yes, maybe you're going to pay a little bit more than if you started up. However, it's already walking and talking. You're just going to optimize it and grow it like you've done, Dan, in the car wash and, and the self-storage. You know, you change systems, add different opportunities for marketing. Um, there's so many different things that you can do to really scale business quickly, or at least give more eyes on your business to bring in more money. And so there's a great book, Buy Then Build, highly recommend that. Have you read that, Dan? I haven't. It's on my list now. All right. Well, see, even Dan's jumping in now. Um, real quick, I want to back up because you said, I manage my finances on Mint. Can you tell everyone what Mint is? Yes. So Mint is... Uh... Intuit is the company that owns it, but it's basically you can go in and link all your bank accounts. Um, so all my bank accounts, 401k, uh, credit cards, everything. So then you can just go in and it it does a pretty good job of categorizing stuff. So you can go back into a month and say, hey, I, I this is what my income was and this is how much money I spent. So see if you're spending more than you're making or if you are saving. Um, but then it also breaks it down into categories. So you can click on a month and you can see, oh, I spent $500 a month and going out to eat this month. I spent $700 on travel. Um, so just a good breakdown because a lot of that stuff is could be flexible. Like you don't have to go out to eat five times a week. So you could cut back expenses there. So you might be spending five or $6,000 a month now, but it's pretty easy to take out a couple thousand of that. And then you can know like what you what you would really need to live on. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan when people are starting on financial, actually, I had a client, we, um, we actually, he's working a job, he had assets, passive income coming in. And I asked him, as I always do, how much are your expenses? How much are you spending on a monthly basis? They didn't know. And so I told him, that's your homework, go figure it out. And what he found out, this was the biggest key, what he found out, he was already financially free. <laughs> and so he didn't have to work. He could, he was actually using a lot of his income to get more deals. However, he eventually within six months, he was gone from his job. I actually had him record his last call with his boss as he was putting in his res re resignation. Um, and it was just really cool to witness. It. But most people, they're not clear what they spend. And it was before we did this, I realized just, I think it was Monday, yesterday. Memorial Day. We went out to pizza and I spent $84 for my wife and two kids on pizza and a tip, right? And I, I look at my finances. Most people, what they do, they swipe, they swipe, and they swipe and they never pay attention. Next thing you know, they have a five, ten thousand dollar credit card bill. And that was me. So I'm speaking to me like 10 years ago when I was in 30 to 40 thousand dollars credit card debt. But Mint is a great tool. I've used it in the past. It's very helpful. If you guys have not, we'll put it in the show notes, but if you haven't used it, sign up. It is secure, right? It is secure. You will link bank accounts. You'll enter your passwords into it and it'll, it'll uh, you know, pull the data for you. 
but it is secure. It is a trustworthy tool. Um, so don't worry. I've used it. I didn't have any problems with it for years. Dan, have you had any problems? No, I haven't. Just sometimes you have to relink an account, but that, that's little stuff. Yeah. Well, look, I'm also making a disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not high, held liable, liable for any of this. I'm just making a recommendation. If you do use it, it is good to go. We've personally used it. So, um, so very cool. So here you are, you're looking at another car wash. You're financially free. You got your living life on your terms. It's been a year now. Just just share with the audience. There's people right now that are listening. They have a nine to five or they're working a small business and they're making good money, but they don't have financial freedom because if they stop, the income stops. But how's this last year been? What are some of the cool things you've done? How have you felt not having to wake up and go to a job? Was it weird? Just fill us in on kind of what this last year has been like for you. Yeah. So the first few months was like, I just used it and I said I was just catching up on life because I felt like I was running thin because my W-2 job at the time was pretty demanding while we were buying. We bought two businesses and was doing all this work. So I felt like I was stretched thin. So I just took time to kind of catch up, uh, get my house in order, get caught up on not that I was buying them bills or anything, but just paperwork. There's a lot of stuff going on. So got that caught up. Uh Took some time to go visit friends I haven't seen in years, high school friends. So did a few little road trips. Got to go on some awesome trips. I've been already been on some awesome trips this year. I'm going on another one tomorrow. So having the freedom to be able to like, oh, I don't have to go ask work if I'm going to take three weeks off. It's like I'm putting this on my calendar and I know it's there in two months. So I'll make sure everything's in order when I leave. But uh, being able to do that has been amazing. Uh, having a morning routine is great. So I, I just I started to get back into reading when I got around Go Abundance. And I think last year before I left my job, I'd read like four books. And then by the end of the year, I had read 19. So being able to sit down and read has been awesome. And having like time to creatively think about stuff. Like I feel like when you're just grinding, it's hard to think of an idea and then think of all the steps that go through it. So it's been really good. Um, I haven't, the goal is to buy something else, but having the time to analyze it, know that I know that I could actually buy something and do it. Has been good, but it's also kind of the economy right now. Everything's changing, so I'm not not trying to push to get a deal. I don't need I don't need it right now, uh, so I don't want to buy a bad deal. Yeah, when you're financially free, you have the time, you have money. It's like you don't have to force a deal or take a less than desirable deal. You're waiting for the one that fits just right for you, hits your buy box, and you don't have to force it. I've seen that so many times. People. Just trying, they're like, I want to buy a business. I want to buy real estate. And they force a deal and it doesn't work out to be what they truly want it. And then they get a sour taste and they say, they kind of wash their hands with financial freedom. It's too difficult. It's too hard. It's yeah. like, ah, oh, if you just slowed down, if you just thought things through, if you just had mentorship or coaching to help you, things would go a lot better. So um, where are you taking off to tomorrow? I'm heading to Europe. So I said in the beginning, my parents are born and raised in Germany. So my all my extended family lives in Germany. So aunts, uncles, cousins. So I'm going there for a week and then going down to Slovenia to jump out of planes and do a bunch of things. <laughs> That's awesome. And what's even better is like, if you want to stay longer than a week, you can, right? Yeah. It's like, you don't have to rush back. You get to go do fun things. If you someone's like, hey, next week we're going to jump out of planes in Ireland, you want to come? You might be like, yeah, I'll just stay an extra week, right? It's like, yeah. how cool is that? That's the benefits of financial freedom. But here's what I will say. There does come a, re a lot of responsibility, right? Like you're responsible yeah. if a car wash goes down in your business. If, you know, something happens, someone runs into it for some reason, runs into a door in the self-storage, right? Like you're responsible for that. You choose to self-manage and to hire someone to do that. And there's pros and cons of both, right? You, But, you know, it's like you could be anywhere in the world and deal with that stuff. You're, yeah. you're doing what we call life, I, I say life by design, master life by design. You design the life you want and then build business around that. And that's that's powerful when you can have that experience. So very cool. Um, all right, before we wrap, we wrap up here, this has been awesome, Dan. I mean, obviously, thank you for sharing numbers. Thank you for sharing kind of like how you got into all, all of this. 
Um, if anyone has, as you're watching, if you have any questions, please put in the comments below. We'd love to have Dan answer anything that comes up. We'll answer any questions that come up. But just want to end on a couple questions here. If you had to pick one book to help or one book that you thought changed your life or your perspective or mindset, what book would that be? So a fi good financial book I read my senior year of college was called uh, Automatic Millionaire. And it's, it's kind of like the millionaire next door, but it's it it's just about like not spending, not keeping up with the Joneses, setting up the automatic savings and just putting money away, um, which I thought was really good for me at that time, uh, which kind of started my financial journey. It's awesome. That, you, you didn't just read that. You actually applied it, which is even better, right? Like I yeah. can't tell you how many times people, I say something or they hear something and they learn something, but they never apply it. And therefore they never have the benefit of it. And so that's what really sounds like set you up for where you are now. Yep. Very cool. That's awesome. What's one piece of advice that you got over the course of your life that made the biggest impact on you? Um, I think it's just taking action, like, like making that one phone call got us into the car wash. Like, it, it's not that hard. If you want to get in shape, like, okay, go sign up for a gym. Uh, if you want to learn about real estate, go find bigger pockets, go read a book. Like, if if you want to do something, there's a next actionable step. So just take take the first action to do that. Don't just say you want to do something, actually make it happen. So good. You can't think, pray, or just uh, law of attraction your way into things. You got to do things too, right? Like there's this partnership, you know, that you need to walk in. So I love that. Uh, last question here. Well, not last question. I got one more after this, but what was the biggest mindset shift for you in your on your journey? Uh, um, Man, it was, it was getting around like-minded people. Um, so like being part of GoBundance, I, I came through the Emerge Ascend, but just being around people that have the same mindset. So they're, they're also looking at things, chasing it, uh, actually having a vision and writing it out, like actually having a plan for where I want to be in five years, instead of just saying that'd be nice in the future. Um, I think that was a big mindset shift because I, we had already bought one business and I bought the other one. And I was, I kind of asked myself, I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing all this stuff. Like I'm just working. Uh, I'm just chasing money, but money isn't the goal. Time is my time is freedom is the goal. Um, so it was good to go through a lot of those exercises and then just being around people you meet. It's just like law of attraction at that point. Everybody's got the same, yeah. same mindset. Just keep learning. Yeah. So um, tell people what Emerge or um, GoBundance Ascend, right? It's GoBundance Emerge now. So it's uh, now. so it, you don't have to have a net worth number to get into Emerge. Um, it's I think it's an eight week program now, but you get exposed to everybody that's in it. So there's people like you that come in on calls. Like there's there's a lot of really big hitters that have been around real estate for a long time. High net worth. Uh, so there's a lot of calls and stuff you learn. You go through some like vision accountability exercises. So there's a little bit of homework in it. And then after you get through the eight week course, if you feel like that's the right spot for you, then you stay and you just get exposure to all these people. You you probably meet business partners there. So it's a lot of people in a lot of different areas. So um, I, it's it's a great way to get get around like minded people. Okay. Yes, it is an awesome program. Jamie Gruber runs that program. Um, and I've got a chance to speak to the group. And then that is supposed to set you up to advance to GoBundance Elite, which is a nice five-figure annual investment into yourself. I say investment and not uh, you know debt because it is not debt. It's an investment in you. And then you have to have a seven figure plus net worth. And so, and then there's a level above that. Um, but for right now, we'll leave it there. So if you're interested in Go Bundance, please let me know. Uh, we have an affiliate link that we can send you to plug in if you want to be around like-minded people. Obviously, Dan has gotten some really good stuff and he's advanced to Go Abundance Elite. And so his net worth has grown, right? And it's through the accountability, it's through the group, it's getting around like minded people. And so that's a big mindset shift for a lot of people. Your environment's everything. Um, so 
awesome stuff. All right. Well, let's do this because I know that every time I interview people, someone will reach out and say, hey, I'd love to connect with that guest. So Dan, how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in maybe car washes or learning or you know, just following your journey? Yeah. Uh, social media is easy. Um, you can find me on Facebook. It's just my full name, Daniel Dalshiermeyer. Uh, Instagram is at freeflykid because it's still a lot of my skydiving stuff and then email is just first not, first name dot last name so dan dot shearmeyer at gmail.com feel free to shoot me an email would love to connect awesome well we'll we'll put all that in the show notes for you guys so if you have any questions you'll see it on the screen here too uh but dan thank you for taking time out of your day jumping on the master life by design millionaire series show excited for what you have going on but even more excited that you're going to over to Europe to jump out of some planes and spend time with family. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Well, uh, you'll have to send pictures. Maybe we'll be able to insert them in here. So in the future, <laughs> yeah. but have fun. Thank Both. you for joining us. Thank you for being real and raw with your numbers. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to people. They expose their numbers, but it's also an inspiration at the same time. It just depends on how you look at it. So, but thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Awesome. All right, Dan. Appreciate you. You guys have a great one. Thank you for tuning into the Master Life by Design Millionaire Series. If you have any questions, let us know if you're interested in coaching and being able to go to that next level so you can create financial freedom. You could go to Europe and just hang out like Dan is. Please go ahead to our website, masterlifebydesign.com. Fill out the application and one of our team members will reach out to you. Again, Dan, thanks for being on the show. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. See you. See ya.